you may have seen Ableton Live just released their new Push 3 controller. This new Push is packed full of amazing advanced new features. But is it really worth it? Maybe it's worth just buying a second-hand Push 2 controller. Is it actually worth upgrading from the Push 2 to the Push 3? In this video, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Push 2 and the Push 3 controller and see how they stack up against each other. So let's dive into the video and see which push controller is right for you. Okay, so first the most obvious thing is the size. So the push three is slightly bigger than the push two. I mean, it's only about a centimeter, so it's not really gonna affect your decision too much. I would say it's quite nice. The push has like little feet underneath that come off come off the ground about half a centimeter which just probably helps with keeping it cool especially if you're running it in standalone mode but like i said i don't think it's going to affect your decision too much it's very minute they look about the same width as well let's look at the overall user interface so it hasn't really changed too much they've done some workflow performances like they have this big encoder here and they have another encoder here here they have a little kind of enter button in the middle of these navigation arrows, which if you see, you don't have that there. So that's just to help you move around the push a bit more fluidly. If I go add device on the push here, I can scroll through using these arrows here, and then I would go load here. Not the end of the world. If we do it on here, if I was to add a device here, I can now either use these like I just showed here. Rather than go load, I go into the enter button, which is in the middle here. I can do all that as well with this dial. So I can scroll this round, so I can go to drums and click in, scroll through, and it's loading. That for me is a lot quicker than that. So that's a real improvement for just my personal <laughs> opinion there. So over here, we got this dial here, which deals with the output volume. Click it to adjust the headphone, and that's that. Here we have the tempo. So we click that in, and that does the swing amount, which they were, well, the volume was up here before you see that's moved and then we had the tap tempo at the top there which would adjust the tempo and the swing in terms of the navigation up and down the side if you look here we pretty much have the same repeat buttons they're a bit slimmer on the push three we have pretty much all the same features here apart from if you look down here it changed a little bit we used to have notes and session mode here on the push two we that's replaced with these two little icons here but this kind of area here has been switched around a little bit and we've now got the duplicate convert and delete buttons around here which were in this kind of encoder area here tap tempo metronome quantize down here now so it's kind of grouped together that was up here before as I said before fixed name for an automate the same then we have down here we have new new button here which will load up a new track and midi capture and session record and play which on the push to see we've got fixed length and automate and we don't have these two buttons here same kind of pitch wheel as before pretty much the same okay so not really too much of a difference there we've just had things move around a little bit there's a few more options down here obviously you've got the uh, midi capture so the new button isn't new that was just there on the push too. So it's just mainly reconfiguring things. We have obviously a different view here. We can view the clip modes here and we can scroll through here and we can actually launch clips directly from there as well as the, the launch pad. Screen is still the same size though, although you've got that kind of clip view. Although you can view the clips on the push three, which was missing from the push two, that was it was so annoying it wasn't on there. Now we've got it, great. It is quite small and we can't see a range view. One thing I would have said, it would have been nice for the Push 3 maybe to have an HDMI out so we could, especially with a standalone mode, we could have it on a bigger screen. That would have been a nice addition to having this clip view. But you know, you gotta be grateful in life and Ableton, I am grateful I can now view clips on a Push screen. Thank you. So the biggest talking point is the MPE pads on this new Push, which you don't have on the push too. So what that means is we now have some kind of three dimensions to these pads rather than just hitting them down and then being velocity sensitive. We also have sliding up features and we also can bend the pitch to the left and the right and we can do that over 
polyphony as well so we can do that to more than one note at a time we still have the pressure and after touch like we did on the push two so the next other thing that the push three can do but the push two can't is it's now an audio interface so it has on the back here it has two inputs which can be stereo linked so you can record directly into the push standalone or you can record directly into Ableton Live via the push. It also has four outputs. So you've got two dedicated outputs and you have a headphone out. We also have the output configurations here where we can go either one, two out of the headphones or we can have three, four out of the headphones and one, two out the speakers or one, two out the headphones and three, four out the speakers. You will need a Y splitting lead. So that's basically means it will split the left and right to dual mono essentially. But yeah, we can control the sample rate, the buffer size, and dictate what type of preamp we're gonna have on both of the inputs. Like I said before, we can link it as well, so you can have a stereo input. That's amazing. We also have MIDI as well, so we can control MIDI from MIDI DIN and USB on the back as well. We can go in and convert the two pedal outs to CV. Now they are Y split as well, so they're dual mono. So as long as you get a Y lead, you've got four CV outs. So with a standalone, you could have four CV outs and a stereo input and have a full on modular setup. That's non-existence on the push two and that for me is a game changer. That's really, really, well that's, well, that's one of the reasons why it made me get this push. That brings me on to connect, connections on the back. We have on the push two, we just have the ability to connect it to the computer and pedal outputs. This we have connections for days. Like I say, we've got audio inputs, we've got audio outputs, we've got four of them, we've got four CV outputs, we've got USB MIDI output, we have MIDI DIN output, and we also have ADA IO, which basically means we can extend the outputs and the inputs we can have another eight inputs, so we can connect it to eight high quality preamp and also eight outputs. So that could help us expanding our CV output. We could use something like the expert sleepers module on our in our Euro rack where we could connect a ADAT cable to it and a lot more audio to CV capabilities. So that's amazing. None of that on the push too. Other thing, standalone. So this can be a standalone unit. Now, I didn't get the standalone unit because I rarely use Ableton without a computer. <laughs> I'm not used to it, so I'm not sure if it's something I would want just yet. The amazing thing Ableton have done is they've decided that you can have this as an upgrade later. So you can buy the kit at a later date for an additional, say, 800 pounds, I think it is, and install it yourself. Now, if you do get the standalone unit, you can also get in it yourself and upgrade the processor and RAM. So it will keep the push standalone up to date with modern day processing speeds and storage capabilities. So they're really building a standalone unit that you will want to have around for a long time. Hence the price, you know. So that's another option is buying the, buying the, just the controller like I have and then upgrading at a later date. So that brings me on to the price. Okay, it's, eye watering the price. So the Push 3 uh, standalone unit comes in at a whopping 1,669 pounds, UK pounds, and that is in 2023. I'm filming this video right now, so it might go up or down, who knows. But like I say, you can get in there and you can update the RAM and memory at a later date with that. Now the option I went for was just the regular push without the internal hard drive and processor and that came in at £879 which isn't too much more than what the push 2 was brand new that was around about six to seven hundred pounds so if you look at it like that it's about a hundred pounds more then the path I took was that I got this because I want all the features and then I want to decide if I want to upgrade at a later date also as it's a new piece of gear who knows how good it is at recording everything inside i kind of want to get used to all the features and decide if that's something i want to do at a later date pros and cons let's do the push two first so push two pros all the core features to control ableton are basically the same in the push three so there's not much change there why because it just works it's been the workhorse for ableton live for the past eight years and it just 
integrates really well and it's very logically laid out slightly smaller and lighter as well especially if you want if you're looking especially if you're looking at getting the standalone push that's going to be a lot heavier than the push 2 so for port so for portability the push 2 is a little bit more portable obviously the price so it's less than half price of the standalone and it's about half price second hand as the regular push 3 controller meaning the one that doesn't have a hard drive built into it now the cons so now it's been discontinued by ableton already it could in the not so distant future stop being supported what that basically means is they won't release any firmware updates and they could start slowly phasing it out to get you to buy the push 3 so that's something to be aware of as well the workflow so the workflow is a bit clunky we discussed how like on the push 3 we've got these new buttons here and we've got the encoders which are not on the push 2 so it's been an advancement there so the workflow has been improved also the other downside is it's not standalone. We don't have the audio interface. We don't have the MPE and we don't have all those connections on the back. Going into the Push 3, the pros, we have a standalone. We have audio interface and we have MPE and we have all those connections on the back. We're a massive pro and a ma they've really stepped up with that. It's a really good upgrade. Another pro, improved workflow with these encoders. It really does make a difference. It makes the workflow a lot more fluid and a lot quicker. Connections, like I said before, you all these connections on the back. You have MIDI I.O., ADAT I.O., Audio I.O., and CV. Amazing. And last one is an extra one, is that you have the option to upgrade this from a controller to a standalone unit at a later date. Also with the Push 3, if you get the standalone, you can also upgrade the RAM and the, the, the hard drive inside, which is an amazing thing Ableton have done. They've really th thought about the longevity of this product. So con, so the core features, as I've discussed, from the Push 2 to the Push 3 have not really changed. There's been some add-ons like we've just discussed, but the core like pads, 8x8 grid, scenes down here selecting the tracks and coders pretty much all the same not sure if it's a con but it's just worth noting the other thing is there's no arrangement view in the standalone if you buy this as a controller for ableton you can still control and use uh, a range view but if you bought this as just a standalone unit you can't control a range view directly in it you can however transfer your files via wi-fi and put them onto the push and put them into Ableton Live and then arrange them further. But as of now, 2023, you cannot control a range view on the standalone unit. I'm sure they'll do a firmware update and do that at some point though. Then the other downside and last one is the price. It's nearly 2000 pounds. <laughs> you know it's for the standalone it's very expensive and the controller is just over 800 pounds so it's very expensive so conclusion if you're just looking for a controller that completely integrates with ableton and you want to control your vsts and audio effects and clips nothing else i would go for the push 2 because not many of the core features from the push 2 have changed from the push 3 and with that said the other bad thing is the price point now with this standalone unit coming in at nearly two grand, e, this second hand at the moment, you can get it from anywhere from 100 to 300 pounds. So it's a very cost effective way to get a controller that pretty much does all the same things for controlling Ableton Live. If you're looking for an MVP controller, you love Ableton, you love using modular gear like myself, Push 3 is amazing. That you've got four CV outputs, two audio inputs you can bypass getting any dc coupled interface you can come straight out of ableton they have presets within their cv instruments which is really good you can control external synthesizers via midi din and via usb as well control and record them directly straight in with the push and the adac capabilities are game changer as well so for me i'm keeping the push 3 as stated above I love all the extra features it's got. I'm not mad on the new expression pads. I know everyone's going crazy about it. It's something I've not really explored too much. I'm sure in a few months I'll be going nuts on it. At the moment, it's the connections for me and the improved workflow that have made this an integral part of my studio setup, live setup already within a month. And I'll be sadly selling my push too. So push three for the MPE pads, ADAT, 
all the connections and the slightly improved workflow. Push to if you just want an Ableton Live grid controller to completely integrate with Ableton. Hey, hope you enjoyed that video. If you do decide to get the Ableton Live Push 2 controller, I have a free easy crash course on it here. Also, if you're new to Ableton Live, I have a bunch of help videos in this playlist here. Hope we see you in a video again sometime soon. Bye for now.